evening, Professor. How are we doing today? Hey, boss lady, I'm doing well. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I hear we're talking about something about distractions. I'm distracted. Are you? Are you? Yes, the hat's distracting me. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a winter hunting hat. <laughs> yeah, it's like my jeans. It's like your jeans? My jeans hat. Well, we definitely need a jean hat right now because uh, it is a jean weather out there. Yeah. It's 30s now, so uh, winter is now upon us, needless to say. <clears throat> I was going to wear the spring pink hat, and I was like, oh, no, that doesn't really go right now. So. Not right now. I'm going <laughs> to agree with you. <clears throat> all righty. I'll get to it here if that's all right. Sure. See if I can keep my job again. <laughs> yes, ma'am, we're talking about distractions uh, tonight with the Masters will be covering distractions as far as coworkers, uh, coworkers who play on their telephone and they're supposed to be helping you with the project or you're working together on a project. So we'll be doing with that. Mm. But they didn't have the technology, of course, that we have back in the olden days. Um, but they apparently had, if you want to call it technology, but I'll just call it relationship problems, the same as we do today. It's amazing to me how the things that we cover on the website, and we think sometimes, well, this is new and different, and others think, well, it's the same old AMO. Well, the answer is it's been going that way through history over and over and over again. Yeah. So tonight, if I may, we're going to talk about two individuals. We're going to talk about King Solomon, and then we're going to talk about King Jeroboam. Uh, just to let you know, uh, King Jeroboam uh, was a servant of Solomon. In fact, uh, he handled his militia uh, when he was with Solomon, but subsequently he became a king, just as King Solomon did. And we'll cover that tonight, what happened. Okay, can't wait so, to hear. Let's talk about distractions. What's the number one distraction for most people in the world? Hmm. You can't get that one. Let's try this. What's the number one distraction for most young men age 18 to 25? <laughs> okay, I think you got it now. It ain't money either. <laughs> you think it might be, but it's not. And for those men out there, you're probably grinning also. You got it figured out. It's the ladies. They're distracting. Oh, you just can't help it. <laughs> you know, they Right for the picking, as my daddy used to say, they're plump and just the right age. And I thought he was referring to the pears and the peaches on the trees, but he wasn't. <laughs> anyway, King Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived. But he had a problem, and it was women. You know, that old boy, he had quite a few wives, uh, 700 wives and concubines. And uh, let's see, he had uh, 300. How did that go? No, 700 wives and princesses. And 300 concubines. That's a thousand women. Oh my goodness. Now, there's only 365 days in a year, so I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, kings did that back in that day. There were a couple of reasons. One, you know, you wanted to show that you were king and almighty uh, and, you know, your virility, blah, blah, blah. But also, the ladies helped manage their resources, helped them manage the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad idea if you think about it. You know, you have loyal workers, if you want to call it that. That doesn't sound good. How about loyal partners? Is that is that the better way okay. to say it? Loyal partners. Because they weren't, you know, conscribed to, to do work or so on, like a physical laborer. But they did help him manage the properties and so on that they had, these kings. Not a bad idea. The, the problem that Solomon ran into, though, is that in order, some people say, to maintain peace, Solomon turned around and married women from different tribes. And the Lord told Solomon to begin with, and he spoke to Solomon twice about this. And he said, do not intermarry with other tribes. Mm -hmm. Just don't. And he warned him twice about this. Now, his first wife, right off the bat, who was Egyptian, so that didn't work too well, I guess. But he started then marrying ladies from Moab and so on. And they had other gods that they worshipped. The problem that happened with Solomon, as the years continued to pass, he wanted to keep his wives happy. But in doing so, they were turning his heart away from God to other gods. It didn't happen immediately. It was a slow, slow process. But he reigned for 40 years, and in his older age is when he really just 
almost 100% turned from God. Mm -hmm. He was going in making temples uh, for these other ladies, for their gods. He was going in and worshiping with them, those gods. Maybe because he was so wise that he thought he didn't need God, or maybe he had accomplished so much in his life he felt he was dependent on himself now, didn't need God. Mm -hmm. But irrespective, Solomon in the end, he came out saying, you know, what is true wisdom? And that is fear God and keep his commandments. Now, I would tell you that the story is done at that point. You know, we can move on to Jeroboam, but really the story is not done at that point. And the reason for it is that David had expressed to his son, Solomon, that you should always walk with God, you know, have God by your side. I don't know that Solomon necessarily did that. I'm not saying he did or he didn't. I'm just saying from my readings, I don't see that he necessarily did. In fact, when he gave that, you know, to fear God and keep his commandments, which is a very good uh, wisdom quote to give, wouldn't it have been better if he said, always walk with God, as your daddy said? That's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. Because which do you think about your parents and I'm talking about myself, too. Do I think about the love that I have for my parents and being with them and learning from them? Or do I think the fear that I had, if I did something wrong, mama's going to whip me or send me over to daddy. And then that was really going to hurt. Because that <laughs> daddy never would use a belt, but he used his hand. And I wish he'd used a belt sometimes. <laughs> it was pretty strong. Yeah. And I think the answer is we remember the love. We don't really mem remember the whoopings, as we used to call them back home. Mm -hmm. So the moral to that story is careful who you marry. Also be careful, and that's one reason even in the New Testament that um, Apostle Paul said, be careful who you're associated with, particularly who you marry. Uh, not unbelievers, it was a suggestion to give, and you can read about that in the New Testament in his teachings. But the second part about it is that as time goes on, those bad companies, if you want to call it that. And again, it doesn't have to be someone who you marry that's a disbeliever God. You may be associated with your best friend. Excuse me. And your best friend may be one that does not believe in God. They're going to corrupt you. It's going to take you down the wrong path if you're not careful. And you've got to be very careful about that. Yeah, I see that. So God told Solomon... He said, I'm going to rip the kingdom from you. I told you not to, and he did, so you're going to lose it. But he remembered what he told his daddy, David, that he would always, always have a piece of it for David's children. So what God did was to leave Solomon ultimately with two parts. And this happened after his reign was over. His son, Solomon, turned around and had the two parts of Judah and Benjamin. But the servant that I spoke of earlier, Jeroboam, he turned around and received the ten tribes to the north of Israel. So, there was, what was the name of that particular prophet? Ahijah, I believe, is the name of the prophet. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. And Jai went to Jeroboam, and he said, King Solomon has disobeyed God. And God gave him a warning, you know, not to quote with other false gods. Before him, Solomon didn't obey, and you're the one now that God has chosen to receive the tribes. So the prophet turned around and took a new cloak that he had off of his back. He tore it into 12 pieces, and he towed uh, Jeroboam, choose 10. So he did. And he told him that's the 10 tribes of the 12 of Israel that you'll be controlled of. And of course, they're the Northern Territory, as we spoke earlier. Now, first thing that happened, though, when Solomon was aware of this, he did the same thing that King Saul did to David, who was Solomon's father. What was that? King Saul tried to kill David. Now Solomon wants to kill Jeroboam. Wow, talk about this. This thing just keeps playing out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A record keeps going. So Jeroboam, he, he runs off to Egypt. In fact, he stayed there until Solomon died. Mm. Now, if you remember the story we covered a couple of weeks back, 
the son of Solomon, turned around and went to the northern tribe and, and you know, told them, you know, la, 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 you know, we we need to turn around and have y'all giving more and so on. And of course, they were oppressed because of the military. I don't think Solomon had built. And remember that he sought the wise men. They told him to be good to the people. Well, then he sought the older wise men. Then the younger wise men told him, I don't know, just tell him, you know, if you, if you thought daddy was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. Right, right. So he, had, he told the northern people, you know, well, if you thought the, daddy was bad with the whips, I'm going to get you with scorpions. And of course, that turned around, that was it. So Rehoboam takes over the northern tribe. The prophet tells him, hey, Jeroboam, God's making the same promise to you that he made to Solomon. If you'll honor my commands, don't worship other gods, I will make a living, so to speak, kingdom out of you and your family. Now, ain't that something? What would you do if you were Jeroboam? I think I'd be happy. Yeah. I definitely try to walk that line. Yeah. Well, <laughs> He didn't wait four years. In fact, it didn't take him that long. Now, I don't know if it was a year or two years or whatever, but it didn't take him that long. Because he was concerned that he might lose his kingdom to Reboam, which was Solomon's son. Mm. So what does he do? Well, he fortified his city, and then he turned around, and he had some golden calves bait. you got to be kidding me. No, no. He turns around and puts golden calves up in a couple of cities, and he tells the people, People, here are the gods that brought you out of Israel. Worship these now. Oh, goodness. <laughs> what do these people come up with? And again, I'm not blaming them. I've done things in my life that I'm like, you know, did it, did it hurt enough the first time? <laughs> you know, you're going to do it again? Right. Oh, my goodness. Now, here's a better one. Now. And again, folks, these are things, and thank goodness they're in the Bible, so that we can learn from it ourselves, okay? It's not that we're comparing ourselves to them and say, you know, I, I wouldn't be that crazy. You know, I'm not that stupid. Well, the answer is I am, okay? Been there, done that a hundred times. And, you know, it hurts and you keep doing it. Um, yeah, anyway, Jeroboam's son got sick. It looked like he was going to die. So he came up with this plan, this ruse. Remember the prophet that I told him, told you about, who had turned around and told him, God's going to give you all this? Well, this prophet was old now, and he's blind. Mm -hmm. So Jeroboam had his wife dress up oh, and go see this prophet on behalf of their son. And so she's asking the prophet, not telling her who she was, hey, my son's sick, dying, you know, can you help us, blah, blah, blah. Well, the man may have been old. Man may have been blind, but guess who he had on his side? God. <laughs> so the ruse was figured out very quickly. Now, the first thing you've got to ask, at least I did, why would Jeroboam do that? If he didn't believe in God to begin with, or maybe he did, and then he didn't because he turned around and put all these cows. Yeah, <laughs> the golden cows in front of his people. Now he's thinking, I need to get back with God again. And it says in the scripture, he thought maybe, you know, that the prophet could turn around and help him through God and save his son. Where are these people? Well, I'm not any better. I'm just letting you know where the stories are. Yeah. The prophet says, no, it's not going to happen. Your son will be dead by the time you hit the doorstep. Yeah. Ultimately, that was what happened. So I would say, and of course, as we ultimately know, all the 10 tribes were pretty much gone, meaning they did not survive. Only the two tribes survived, and that is where Israel is today. We talked about that, Iran, Persian Empire coming in, King Cyrus, etc., a couple of weeks back. But I do want to say one other thing, that even after Solomon's son took charge, he had the same things. Israelites, and then after his death, another king came in. After his death, another king. He was kind of back and forth with these kings. Some of them were even worse than the ones before. Immediately turning around and putting in idols, uh, turning around and put prostitutes at the temple. I mean, it was something. Mm. It's just amazing how people could not get past that idolatry that we call it today. Now, we could all sit here 
and say, everyone listen to this podcast, and you and I, well, we never do that. You know, God's number one, and we know there's only one God, and that's good. And that's very good because that's one thing that we know. <laughs> if we turn around and have other gods before him, we're not going to have a good fairy at the end of time. I know Jesus is there and believes we believe in him, you know. We have sanctification and so on, which is good. We're keeping that focus. Right. But I think we also have to look at just as Solomon did, is the wealth that he had. As he accumulated more wealth, he just kind of felt like he didn't need God. Mm -hmm. So the go away message here is to be careful who you associate with. But also by serving God, if you're getting richer, material riches, and bigger and bigger, I'm going to give you one little saying that my mother used to say, and you may have heard it from your grandmothers also. Don't get too big for your britches. <laughs> I don't know if you heard it or not. Yeah. But us in the South, we heard it. Again, I'm going to repeat it. Don't get too big for your britches. God giveth and God taketh away. So best of luck to you all. And boss, that's all I got. <laughs> and I can still fit my britches right now. So I'm okay. <laughs> And they're a little tight because yeah. it's Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling. That's a stretchy thought. Mm. But uh, no, that's an awesome story. You have the best stories. No, as long as I you yeah. keep me employed, I'll keep trying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you do see that a lot sometimes. You know, you think, oh, you know, I'm where I need to be. I don't need anything more about it. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. fall away. Yeah. And it's really not what we do. In our younger lives, not that that's not important, don't get me wrong, but where do we turn out in the end, meaning when we get at the end of our life? Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul said, it, we've got to go through sin. There's just no way around it. Right. But the wish is that as we go through sin, we become stronger and a better Christian. We're closer to God. We see, well, excuse me, we've done wrong and we become a better person. Yeah. You know, you, you don't turn around and become a champion at anything without practice, practice, practice. And you're going to fail. You're going to get back up. You know, and that's also in servitude to God. You're going to fail, but you got to constantly practice and get better. Right. Have a relationship with them. Pray to help you just get through these things. And Solomon went the opposite way. He was so grand on the front end, even having the Old Testament where a gentleman came to him and said, you know, everything that I've heard about you is so wonderful. You know, praise be to your God. Solomon's smiling and so on, you know, he's he's pushing God forward to everyone. And that was when he was a young man. When he got older, we go the other way. There's bitterness there. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you for having me, boss. Yeah, appreciate it. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Got Merry that coming Christmas. Up. Yeah, yes. that's gonna... Not that far off. No, ma'am. All right. Well, everyone have a great week and thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye-bye.